For Stanford molecular geneticist David Kingsley, the transformation of the stickleback pelvis opened a door on an evolutionary puzzle. What happened at the genetic level, at these early stages where the body plan is first being laid out, that makes the difference that we now see? The physical forms of all animals are products of development, that process in which a fertilized egg grows and is shaped into an adult. Changes in form, therefore, arise from changes in development. And since genes control development, changes in form are ultimately due to changes in genes. David, these two fish look different, but they have thousands of genes. How do you pinpoint which genes make the difference? We started like any geneticist starts. You got to have two things that are different, you got to cross them. Geneticists use crosses to map the location of genes that make the difference. Ocean and freshwater varieties of stickleback can be crossed by collecting sperm-filled testes from males and eggs from females and mixing them together. In a matter of days, the beating hearts of stickleback embryos are visible through a microscope. When mature, this first generation is bred again. Each cross reshuffles the genetic material and traits that are passed on from one generation to the next. Traveling with the genes are stretches of DNA geneticists use as markers. And that gives you the chance then to try to figure out which of the pieces at the genetic level go together with the traits that you see visually at the whole organism level. That's done using the DNA markers to link the trait, in this case, the presence or absence of a pelvic spine, to general locations on specific chromosomes. This hunt eventually pointed a finger at a well-known and powerful developmental control gene called PIDX1. So, naturally, they compared the PIDX1 protein coding sequence in fish with and without pelvises. What'd you find? I mean, actually didn't find anything at all. At the, at the coding region of the PIDX1 gene, the actual part that makes the protein, um, there isn't any difference between marine and freshwater fish. Well, that's fairly puzzling. I mean, <laughs> we for years were used to the idea that if there's an evolutionary change, that would be a change in the protein made by a gene. Yep. So you see no differences in the sequence of the PIDX protein between the two fish. I mean, isn't that a paradox? Isn't that a surprise? Well, it's still possible that there's something about the expression or the regulation of the gene that's changed. So the structure is fine, but maybe the timing or the place that's normally expressed is different. To find out, what team? Kingsley's team soaked embryos with a chemical dye that turns blue any tissue where the PIDX1 messenger RNA is produced. Well, if you look at a marine embryo, you see the PIDX1 gene is expressed in multiple places. It turns on in the head region, in the lips, inside it would be on in the pituitary, but it also turns on along the side of the body, this very strong blue patch here. In that tissue, it's telling cells to start growing a full pelvis and spines. And what about in fish that aren't gonna make a pelvis? Right, key moment in the lab was the same experiment in the lake fish. The head region, you still see blue on the lips. You still see blue inside the head. You don't see that little key blue spot along the side or on uh, the ventral surface of the fish. So the structure of the protein is the same between the two populations, and the expression of the gene is the same between the two populations, except for just in the pelvis. How can the expression of a gene change in one part of the body, but not another? This is possible because the coding regions of most genes that control development are surrounded by a number of regulatory switches, each of which controls gene expression in a different tissue. Like all DNA, the sequences of switches can acquire mutations. Kingsley had a hunch that the switch regulating PIDX1 expression in the pelvic tissue of freshwater sticklebacks was broken. But to find out, he had to first find that switch. Geneticists find switches by tracking the expression of a reporter protein that glows green where a switch is active. After cutting the DNA around the PIDX1 coding sequence into many different fragments, they attach the green reporter gene to each of them. Then, 
they injected those fragments into stickleback eggs. We wait a week or two, and then we ask, are our sticklebacks glowing in the pelvis? After five years of testing different fragments, they had fish with glowing pelvic tissue. They'd found the stretch of DNA that contained the PIDX1 switch. Sequencing that region revealed a dramatic mutation. Fish that have lost their pelvis have deleted the pelvic switch. It's gone. But because this mutation only crippled one specific switch, the PIDX1 gene remained fully functional in the rest of the body. If you do that, you can have a huge effect on the development of that structure, but the fish is fine. Actually, the fish is better than fine. When that deletion occurred, it conferred an advantage on the fish, and that uh, mutation spread throughout the entire population. So the obliteration of that switch actually makes these fish better adapted to the new environment they're in That's right. than their ancestors. With the switch identified, he was ready for a final test. If you've got the right switch, you ought to be able to put it back and reverse the evolutionary trait. So they joined the working switch to the PIDX1 coding region and injected the combination into eggs from a freshwater stickleback that would normally never form pelvic spines. And? That was a good day in lab. Um, it works. There's a fish now swimming around in the tank. Hasn't formed a pelvis for, you know, maybe thousands of years. It does, if you put back in the key sequence. Kingsley's team had found the broken switch that caused fish from one lake to be without spines. But that isn't the only place one can find spineless sticklebacks. When he looked at fish from other lakes, he found something remarkable. If you look at a fish that's lost its pelvis in Scotland or Iceland, Alaska or British Columbia, the same switch has been thrown away over and over and over again whenever the fish have evolved the loss of a pelvis. Given the same selective conditions, evolution can and does repeat itself right down to the level of the same gene and